You know, a lot of folks have used magnetic loop antennas in the field pretty successfully. They have some limitations, but they've also got some real strengths. One of the things that uh, I've had questions about with regard to these loops is how do they work on a low band like 40 meters? Well, in this video, I'm going to take a look and see if I can get this chameleon F loop to work on 40 meters, see what kind of results we get. Hi, I'm Tracy, VE3TWM. Thank you for tuning in to Outdoors on the Air. So here we go. This is the Chameleon F loop. And uh, this particular model that I've got came with a couple of different radiating kits, one of which is the aluminum radiator here. And, uh, and, and here, of course, is the base unit for it. I'm going to get this all set up along with the matching coax, which as you can see has a choke built into it. We'll get this thing fired up on 40 meters uh, and then see how it goes. But first things first, let's get this thing put together. So here is the matching unit for the loop. Now on the back side you see these flanges, these protrusions here. This uh, on one on either side, this is the attachment point for the aluminum ring. Now this aluminum ring is used with the matching unit here to provide a good SWR on bands literally from uh, 60 meters on up to 10 meters. Of course we're trying for 40 meters today. There's no adjustment that's required on the loop itself, only on the matching unit. So I am simply going to attach down here and then I'll move on to the next step. All right, so the ring is now installed. It's a very simple process. On the bottom here, where it joins onto the matching unit, you've got a bolt, a wing nut, and you've got a couple of washers, one washer on either side, just to provide good electrical contact. All right, well, Tom and I got the loop all set up on the tripod, pulled out the analyzer, and it wasn't resonant anywhere across literally from zero megahertz up to 30 megahertz and beyond. Uh, we, we substituted out the coaxial cable, tried putting the choke on the other end, uh, even tried a different analyzer to see if we'd get a different result, tried uh, band A and pan band B on the matching unit, nothing not even close to being resonant, no dips, so now we're going to try the coaxial cable. We opted to replace the aluminum loop with a coaxial loop and using that method we were with a single loop as opposed to a double coaxial loop we were able to get a dip on 10 meters. We haven't done a lot of testing on the other bands but we were certainly able to get a dip which we were absolutely not able to do we were far more than 10 to 1 SWR uh, across the entire spectrum using the aluminum so we don't really know what the scenario is there could be an issue with the capacitor in the box here hey bear in mind that when I bought this this was used I don't know what kind of uh, uh, treatment it had before I purchased it uh, I can tell you that I have used it successfully in the field and other times. But now what we're going to do, uh, Tom and I, we're going to go to the double coaxial loop configuration and see if we can get uh, a resonant point on 40 meters. The screen, can you see right. it? Let me just do one of these. I can see it. That's I perfect. wouldn't change that because we tuned this oh, for... Oh, seriously? Seriously, like that cannot... Yeah, leave it, leave it as this. <laughs> like I oh, swear to God, like it's good for <laughs> our meticulous... Oh, it's done routine. now. Okay, here's what we're looking at on the analyzer screen. You can see we've got a significant dip down just above 7200 kilohertz. This is going to be what we need to use for today's activation because we're just running out of time. Struggles, so. <laughs> yeah. I don't think we're going to use in a, use in a, <clears throat> in a video, but uh, they got hurt in the process. Oh, God. It's like my fingernail. Is that your chart? <laughs> oh, 
Jesus. Oh. Screwed up? Royally. Oh, God. Oh, Lord, love a duck. <laughs> Thank God we haven't transmitted. I had I had a bad feeling about it. I'm going to remove the kinks. Let's see if, uh, if it helps. Run the test. Yep. Helped a ton. 1.35 at 72.32. Okay. So, yep. so kinks being removed. I don't know if that helped. So, so make sure that you're on the dot because this is mega sharp. Yeah. You can go 1K each way, but looks good. When Tom and I came out here, the idea was to shoot a video uh, talking about the ability of the Chameleon F-Loop to operate on 40 meters. I did not anticipate the kind of struggles that Tom and I encountered. And as a result, you know, we, we burned up a lot of time with troubleshooting. Again, not necessarily a fault of the antenna, but there might be uh, some, I don't know about the, uh, the history of this particular antenna, as I bought it on the used marketplace. It, it could very well be that there's a damaged capacitor in there. Tom and I are sort of thinking that's probably what's at play. We did a lot of A-B testing back and forth between the aluminum uh, loop and the coaxial loop where we weren't able to make any headway at all with the aluminum loop but were with the coaxial loop. I think if we'd started with the coaxial loop we'd have been able to get on the air and uh, in, in such a such a time frame that we could have actually had some time left for operating and hey listen Tom and I have uh, have families to tend to uh, and all the demands that go along with that so so we literally have run out of time I can't show you any contacts made with the chameleon on 40 meters but uh, you know it's, it's just sort of an interesting experience in, in walking through how do you troubleshoot something like this. We just tried various things until we were able to make the coaxial loop come into resonance. And and then, you know, from here, I'm, I'm not sure what the next step will be. I may end up having to contact Chameleon and see if I can get a replacement capacitor for this unit. I just thought I'd, sh I'd bring you in, rather than just leave this all on the cutting room floor, I'd bring you into sort of like a behind the scenes of when the shoots don't go right. And if you've got any suggestions about what you think might have happened with the aluminum uh, radiator, feel free to leave a comment below. Let me know. I'd be very interested. I'm sure Tom would be as well. But that's all for this time. Thanks for watching. Now it's your turn. Get out of the shack. Get outdoors and hopefully get on the air. 7-3 from Tracy, VE3TWL.